What's up America? This is Kim and Neil with Geauga Firearms Academy. Thanks for watching. Today we're going to talk about why we keep the gun in our workspace and the history of that and why some people were taught differently. Before we get started, we have some classes coming up in February. We have a CCW and also a new medical kind of introduction. With it's going to be a very exciting class. Yeah, probably. it's going to be kind of like a combo looking at defensive mindset and also some medical. And, and then for those of you in the Northeast area, it's cold oh, and yeah. snowy. So this class is going to be indoors. That's kind of, <laughs> kind of the key. Which to this. is good. Absolutely. <laughs> and then we'll of course have all our other classes rolling out in the spring and summertime. So if you are nearby or you're interested in visiting us, uh, make sure you sign up to be on our newsletter so you know when we have our classes coming out. Yep. All right, on to the movie, folks. We get a lot of people who come to us and they've been taught their whole life to keep that gun down range. And so why is that, Neil? Well, first of all, it's important because it is a safety rule, but there's a difference between I'm on a square box range and I just keep the muzzle down range because it's the first time I've been in learning about a, a pistol and I'm learning about safety and I'm learning about the functions of it. But at some point, we have to evolve to more of a defensive positioning. I mean, we carry guns I would say a good portion for defensive purposes, right? And we're not saying don't to be unsafe and just pointing the gun in any direction. Of course not. That's very important. And it's still going to be very safe. It's just not necessarily going to be straight in front of you, pointed perfectly parallel with the ground at your target area. That doesn't necessarily mean, though, that it's unsafe. So you probably have seen this type of situation where the person's shooting. Let's just do it this way. Okay, so their gun locks open. Uh, or the slide locks back and now they're going to do some type of reload they drop their magazine hopefully on the ground you don't catch it please don't be this person okay we don't catch magazines there's no point in catching an empty magazine and again i guess this is where we're going to also be very clear on the difference between actual training for defensive purposes and just the general range safety rules so kim why do we drop the magazine rather than catch it in our hands or pull it out well, because we're all about defense in real life. That's our, our background and that's what we teach. And so when you're doing that, you're, you're teaching yourself to, to grab it. You're teaching bad habits. And what good is an unloaded magazine? Why do you need to add an extra well, step? Throw of, it at their eyes. Yeah, you're going to catch it. But what's most important is that you're reloading the gun as quickly as possible. So adding catching a magazine doesn't really help in that process at all. Right. So if this gun is unloaded, I need to fix it. Priority number one along with not standing still, but that's beside the point. Uh, I need to fix this gun. So I need to do that in the most efficient manner. Catching, pulling, touching the magazine when it should be going to get a new one that has fresh fuel in it, this is the priority, not messing around with this. Don't worry, your magazines will not break. And if they do, great news, whatever that magazine is, whatever manufacturer it is, gotta go, because those are garbage. They should be able to fall on the ground, no issues, hundreds and hundreds of times. Uh, even if you did have an issue with a magazine, they're super easy. Spring in a base plate and you're good to go. Rather than us uh, being here, dropping the mag out, even if we did it properly and it fell on the ground, then I get my new mag and I keep this point down range at all times because I can't take it off the target area where it's parallel to the ground and do this. Now, this is not by any means an effective way to load your gun, okay? Number one, in order to do this, it's very difficult to find a box, right? Two boxes in, in space. Line them up perfectly. And again, what's the big S when we always talk about? Stress. Okay, so I don't care that maybe you can do this here perfectly and you can do this repetitious and all this nonsense. Number one, I'm not going to be what? Standing still. Right? Stress Th stress. Okay, let's, let's assume this is real. I shot my last round. I need more ammo in the gun. Why would I stand still? Right? Pretty logical there. Okay, so if I need to fix this gun, I need to move. Do you think it's an effective way to run if I said for $1 million... Uh, you can, I need your fastest time, and you can do it two different ways. You can either run like this, or you can bring the gun here where you can run much more naturally normally. By the way, is my, here, don't move. Did I in any way muzzle Kim, okay? Did I endanger her with the muzzle? Absolutely not. Could I fix my stuff? Yes. So I'm giving you a little preview of the answer. <laughs> so we've got to be able to move from, from one space to another, and I need to be able to fix this gun. So what do we do? We're going to bring it into our workspace. Our workspace, field of view, radar, whatever you want to call it. Basically, I want to be able to bring this gun here so that one, I can see Kim or the bad guy or whatever the case is. 
And I can switch my focus for brief seconds to the gun when need be. Mm -hmm. And when do we need to be able to see the gun, Kim? To make sure it actually seats in there. Right, so think about this. Under stress, under movement, I need to get this new magazine up. So I don't know how well the camera's gonna pick this up, but if, if, if you kind of look at my eyes, I would be bringing this magazine up here while I'm watching you the threat, right? When I get to about here somewhere, I don't wanna blow it and miss my mag well as well and then waste more time. So right about here, my vision for one split second is gonna go from my threat to the gun so that I make sure I get that into the gun, back to my threat, and then I run the gun the way I would normally run it. How, whatever method you wanna to go to, and we'll talk about that. One of the things I always teach students to do is when they bring their gun up, it's kind of, a, kind of on an angle, almost as if you were gonna be able to read your name in the inside here of the magwell area. So I'm from, from the shooting position, I kinda of bring it in here so that I know then I hit that magazine each and every time. So it's here, and I reach, see it. Okay, I read, boom. Because it doesn't do me any good no matter how fast I go if I miss. I wanna be able to make sure that that hits my spot. Other quick things that'll help you out a lot when you're trying to reload is always make sure your bullets, yes, the bullets, the actual things that come out, are facing forward when you put them in a mag pouch or whatever pocket or anything that you're gonna use. Another important thing is using your index finger because we have a natural point of aim. It just makes things so much easier when you're reloading. Because like Neil said, if you're out here trying to find a box in a box, it's a lot harder. But if, you have, if you're using your index finger and you're using your natural point of aim, you're gonna be able to find it much easier. And there's a trick, by the way, mm -hmm. if you guys can do this right now at home, if you just make a, a kind of an open fist here like you're holding a, a magazine of a gun, you can literally look the other way, take your finger and point to that magwell each and every time. It's, it's, again, like Kim says, mm -hmm. a natural point. Another thing that really helps a lot is to have like an index point, a place where you always put your finger because you don't want to have it all the way up here because that would be a bad day. You're going to jam that up there and you're going to have a, a really, you remember that experience. You um, <laughs> Just so you guys can see that too up close. If you, if what Kim's talking about, bring your finger up higher though. I have my finger, I have little fingers. <laughs> yeah, so right there where the cuticle is, if you're trying to press that in, that that's, that would be a bad, bad time. You will, you will remember, remember that, that lesson. You won't do that one twice. But that also helps a lot and just helps you be faster. And it's all about practice, practice, practice. Like we always say, if you do this all the time, you will not even think about it. It'll just be a response. Yep. It's all about repetitions. Another important thing we see sometimes is that people will switch hands. So your gun should always be in your shooting hand unless it's injured and we're not able to shoot with it. So don't take it to your other hand and load it all funny. Hey, so one more quick thing, when you guys are at the range uh, anywhere, we always talk about this in CCW classes, again, on the occasion that we do do them, they're not drawn from holsters, students are picking guns up. And so just so you guys know, if you're right-handed, okay, always make sure that the grip is pointed to the right. If you're left-handed, make sure the gun, is, the grip is always pointed to the left when you set it on a table. Reason being is if I'm right-handed, when I go to pick up this gun, my trigger finger, my right finger, will be on top of the gun, totally visual, and when I pick it up, I have no, no room for air here. I can see everything. If I, whoop, my light came on. If I go to pick it up from the left side, which people do all the time, what do they do? They go to scoop it, okay? When I go to scoop it, my finger goes into places it shouldn't go. So always put your, if I'm a lefty, this way, if I'm a righty, this way, so the trigger finger's always where we want it to be. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up, like, share, comment. We always love to hear from you. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe here on YouTube. Click that bell so you get notified every time we put a video out. You can find us on Instagram, on Facebook, and we put all of our premium content on Patreon. Until next time, remember, it's always better to be judged by 12 than carried by 6.